Nothing. I think we can do sarcasm and irony a bit better. Here. It's funny, when I first moved to London, um, and uh, for an American, I'm actually quite sarcastic, but uh, I think everybody just thought I was stupid. And I was like, no, no, I'm being sarcastic. And they're like, oh, we didn't know Americans do sarcasm. Now, the fact of the matter is that I actually am stupid also. I didn't want to say anything. I, was, uh, you know, I couldn't really add to it. Raising the button. Please. Heinzelman, three bet from Elder. And he's peeled a lot from the big line. Maybe this is a new strategy with this stack. He's really trying to apply the pressure. And uh, he didn't do this the first time around when they had, you know, when he had a two to one chip lead. It was Heinzelman that was really applying a lot of the pressure. Well, yeah, yeah obviously the, um, the situation has changed now. Um, Elder realizing that he's got Heinzelman on the ropes and uh, taking the leaf out of the German's book and. Yeah. Pounding him. Yeah, you've got to be careful, though, obviously. You don't want to know. I mean, Heinzelman's still fairly deep, so you, you don't want to obviously put yourself in a spot where you pot commit yourself with a hand that you don't want to be in there with. And then suddenly double up Heinzelman, and now it's back to we're, we're back to a, uh, you know, a dead heat. Yeah. Well, it's still only up like 13 million when he's to, to about 15. So, yeah, fairly even. So, yeah. I mean, a bit, it gives him one shot. Yeah. I just think shot. a lot of I think a lot of yeah, beginning yeah. players actually they, they they think well I'm on the kill I got I'm, I'm on the ropes I'm on the ropes I'm on the ropes and then when their opponent shoves you're going well I'm getting like 1.7 to one okay I'll call and you're dominated yeah and that's something you've doubled him up and you've given him you've given him a little bit of confidence a little bit of hope and now he's back in it um, so you're saying take that shot but be, be wise about where you take that shot well I just think you know when you I, I think it's uh, I was talking to David Williams about this because we did, did some commentary together and he says you know when you're when you're in a heads-up situation and you've got a big chip lead and you've got to protect that chip lead, obviously you want to... It's a fine line between being aggressive and applying the pressure but not doing it too much and giving up that lead. You don't want to... If you've if you got your thumb on your opponent, you want to keep your thumb on your opponent. You, know, you don't want to let him off easy. Make him earn his way back in. You know, if he's going to double up and get to 14 million, make him earn it. Fair point. So you want a small ball, grind him away. I mean, I just think, you know, you play smart. Obviously, you don't mind playing big ball if you've got the goods, but... The worst thing you do is, you know, you raise the hand like King-10, the guy shoves, and you find yourself, well, I'm getting some good odds, okay, I call, and the guy, the guy turns over, he's king, and now you're like, ah, oh. just because you were anxious to end the tournament. So this went check, check on the flop. Elder led 400,000 on the turn on Heinzelman calls. So the pot is worth just over 1.4 million as we head to the sixth of Spades River. Headboard, three diamonds. And Elder's going to lead out again. Nine. Makes it 900. There's that trophy shaking. Again. It's going to go, isn't it? <laughs> Looks like Hansen was coming in for a raise. It's always interesting when you raise in the river. Raise. Looks like over two and a half million there. I mean, stating the obvious here, but raising on the river, it's, it's different than raising on the flop for the turn. Obviously, there's no more draws, there's no more cards. It's basically you're either a raising a bluff or you're raising as a for value. Oh five. Looks like Elders in a world of pain with this decision. He's obviously got something. You know and. You know, the way the hand, this hand played out, I mean, Hanselman could easily have a six in his hand. I mean, you, you talk about the way this hand played out. I mean, could Hanselman have had some sort of a draw with a six in his hand and then, um, you know, caught running cards? I think Elder's probably got a cool. queen in his hand. Cool. Pocket threes. Pocket threes. Yeah. I think Elder's good. No, I guarantee he's good. Yeah. Obviously, I mean, Hanselman clearly putting, turning his threes into a bluff. Wow, and, uh, big wow, call big there, call there with a the seven. Yeah, good call. Big, big call there with a the seven. That's two big calls now he's made. I mean, Heinzelman, clearly you're not, you're, not, you're not raising with threes in the river for value. No, you're, you're never going to get, you're never getting called by worse. Turning his hand into a block. Yeah, clearly. He, 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 it's one of those spots where he thought he might be good. Thought he might be good, and then at the river, when, when his opponent bets 900,000, he goes, okay, I'm not good anymore. I'm going to turn my hand into a bluff. And, uh, you know, two hands in a row, Heinz, two big hands in a row, Heinzelman bluffs yeah. and two big big calls from Elder. Yeah, and now we can have, have a look at the screen. We can see down to 24 big blinds now, 160 big blinds for Elder. He's got a stranglehold on his heads up battle. Yeah, no, he, he seriously does. There's two big hands. Great calls. 
I mean, the hand where he got he got lucky to double up. Really, there was nothing he could do about that. No mistake there. But the two big hands where and he had uh, to make the big calls, he's done it well. As we come come to the climactic finish, and I don't want to say it's coming in soon. <laughs> Obviously, we're live. We don't know when it's going to end. But um, Oki Meinsma asks, says, "Hello, to what poker achievement is Heinzelman's consecutive top two finishes comparable?" And Oki is from the Netherlands. And anyway, what's your uh, what's your best guess? Uh, well, I'll give you a couple that I think are. are, are Okay, well, she- Seamus, our, our producer, is um, very wise to say Nacho Barbero, oh. two back-to-back LAPTs. Yep, that was... Uh, I was there for the second one and the absolute steamroll of the final table. Cool. Uh, yeah, I, guess the, uh, I guess if we're talking about back-to-back tournaments in terms of the same tournament, Vanessa Selps, Mohegan Sun, yeah. and APTs, Jason mm-hmm. Mercier. Yeah. Uh, I think if you look at the World Series Spanish of Poker main event, I mean, how about Greg Raymer back in uh, when he won it in 04 and then okay. coming 25th in 05? Incredible, incredible with that size field. Yeah. Just incredible, especially with you know with a bullseye in his chest. Yeah. The next year, yeah, I think Mark Karam got two top three finishes in the Monte Carlo Grand Final. Season uh, three Dan Harrington way back when. Yeah, Four, really good third team. place and a fifth place finish. Yeah, okay. So there's quite a few. Yeah. <laughs> I think I made um, two uh, media event final tables back to back in season four. I think stacked fields. And in addition to the prize money, the winner of this year's event will also take home a custom-designed bracelet from the official bracelet sponsor of the EPT7 San Remo, Danish-owned jewelry company, Shambhala Jewels. Shambhala. Shambhala. 320. At the moment, I'd say those jewels are loosely, I'd say loosely, tied around Rupert Elder's wrist. It's not a double knot, it's just very, you know, single knot, so it could slip off, but at the moment... So they're hanging on. Yeah. And these chip counts are correct, by the way. It's 26 million to 3.4 million. So, uh, obviously, Elder in command. He's going to need some cards now, though, as well. It's going to be hard for him to, to bluff his way back into this continuously. Lena Golgavak says, asks, is Max married? After Germany, now he has a ring, and I don't remember seeing it three weeks ago. I think he had it on three weeks ago. Yeah? Do, do Germans wear wedding rings on their third finger of their left hand? I'm not sure. Some countries do do, do on the right. I think Austria is the, the right hand, so maybe it's the same in Germany. We'll try and find that out for you. If anyone knows the okay. Okay. wedding ring etiquette in Germany, please do email in. It's, uh, it's a question of thumb. Your thumb? Yeah. yeah. Your thumb or your right Danny hand. McCullough says, Can I get a shout out to all the guys watching the stream from Warwick Poker Society? Love Danny Boy Poker Pro. You want to do a little shout out for Danny Boy Poker Pro? Hi, Danny. Hope you're enjoying the show. How much is that? Is that good enough? Warwick. And it's uh, Warwick, Warwick Poker Society. A little shout out for them. Hi, Warwick Poker Society. We're not very good at this, the Brits, are we? We haven't got your enthusiasm. <laughs> Come on, I think you should be doing a shout out, David. I'm a little bit more I, I stopped. I honestly had my first shout Ooh! All in the call. It was going to happen soon enough. All in the Here call. We go. And it looks like Heinzelman is. Oh, he's wow. dominated. He's way behind. He's way behind. He's just thinking, you're just hoping when you get called you got live cards, and he does not have live cards. Ace 5, Queen 5, and. Uh, Three outs. We are five cards away from possibly. Finishing the San Remo tournament. Let's see the the, the flop. Seven three deuce. No nothing help. there for Heinzelman. Needs a queen. Queen of clubs would be an interesting card. <laughs> what four clubs? Four clubs? You can have four clubs if you want. Then they chop it. Yeah. Ten. Uh, no help. A queen and only away. a queen. And interestingly enough, 20 minutes ago, Heinzelman was one card away from winning this event. Now, Elder is one card away. The river. It's That's a king! It. And that is it. It is over. Rupert Elder is our EPT Season 7 San Remo champion. How much does he get for that, David? 
930,000 euros. Um, before we congratulate him, let's just say for a second, Max Wine, Max, thank you, got so excited I forgot his name, Max Heinzelman, what a phenomenal, phenomenal accomplishment. Runner up, back to back EPT events, earns himself 1.1 million euros in the two tournaments. It's one of those weird scenarios when a guy's just become a millionaire over the course of three weeks, but you still feel sorry for him. I don't feel sorry for him. But a fantastic, fantastic finish. But this guy is the man of the moment, Rupert Elder Andrew from Tink. the UK. Andrew Tang said it was his time, and he was absolutely right. Yeah, it was. You know, he got a little bit lucky here and there, played exceptionally well. Kind of bided his time, didn't really mix it up early on. I think he had to do that with his, you know, his table position. Yeah. Find some of the animals had left, and yeah. um, but he, uh, you know, he waited out the rest of the players. Those are the chips. The players standing behind them, and he earns himself nine hundred and thirty thousand euros. A fantastic trophy, the title, <laughs> the Shambhala jewelry. Shambhala. And we'll see him yeah, in Madrid we'll because. We'll see him in Madrid in two different tournaments. Three, two different tournaments. Yeah. The main event and the champion's a champion. There he is, the EPT7 yeah. San Remo champion. Yeah, another British winner in this season's tour. I want to thank you all for watching. Yeah, I think you played better than me. Had, so.